back in the office. Mate talk in a much more comfortable sitting. There's no wind. Last time around again, did you hear the wind coming through the mic? It's like, anyway, what do you do? Um, so in the office, I uh, have my mate. Actually, this is another one that I got. I mentioned last time around that I got uh, like a certain, uh, I discovered a nice little pottery place. Uh, this is another piece that I got. I liked, anyway, it was cool. Um, all right, let me talk about a few things. Uh, today I'm gonna go a slightly, I'm gonna, it's gonna be um, a little bit all over the place today. So uh, I'm gonna give you a heads up, a warning. You're welcome to leave right now going up. I'm not in for the mood for this today. Or you could hang around with me and um, enjoy your, uh, grab your beverage. Ideally, I, I'd actually, I'd love to know if anyone is, um, has a mate. So are you actually, uh, game enough to try out mate uh, from all these mate talks that we're having or are you keeping it nice and in the safe zone which is a water or a coffee or a, a soft drink of some sort excuse me for one minute there is something divine and magic about mate i don't know what it is it's that supreme bitter taste but also the all the nutrients that's in here all right so um, last week I released the video on MFK. So I had the opportunity to travel to Malaysia um, in a few months ago, a few weeks ago now. And we, there was a backlog. I had so many other things going on. Um, plus my uh, normal work got really busy. And so as a result, I just, it, anyway, everything banked up. So I finally got the MFK video out. Now, I do want to point out this. The gentleman that you see in the video, his name is Baha. Now, this man was, firstly, he's a champion because the lady who was meant to have filmed with me became very ill and was not able to actually film on that day. She actually, she came with the greatest desire to do it, but I could see from her that she was not feeling good. And, um, and also, look, filming creates its own level of stress. So when you put a camera in front of people and all of a sudden you start putting lights, everything else, I'm telling you, the, at the best of time, your heart rate increases, you start perspiring and uh, you freak out. Now, she was not well, she had to step aside and Baha actually just grabbed the baton and went straight for it. Now you see in that video, he looks very um, nervous and he was unfortunately throughout the whole shoot. I was trying to get him to relax, trying to say funny things. I, there were other things that I said to him, like it was just trying to make him, you know, but I think I was making him more nervous with my sense of humor. But anyway, um, so I just want to thank Baha. He did an awesome job. It was something that um, was put on him at the last minute and uh, he was able to, well, to help out in this situation. Um, what was all this about? So the company that that owns or has the license to these brands, it's, it's called Bakash. And to put it into context, what does it mean? Who is Bakash? What's this all about? Uh, the reason why, so uh, I've done some work for the Bakash group here in, in Australia for a brand called True Fit and Hill. They liked the work that we did. It was very successful locally. And they uh, invited me to go across to Malaysia, to Kuala Lumpur and uh, do some filming there, both for MFK and also for the True Fit and Hill store. They have the biggest store um, outside of the UK. So actually, I think even the world. Um, so those, those productions are coming out in uh, succession now. We're, we're um, the team's working on that right now. Um, now, who is Bakash? So they started, the, 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 the gentleman's name is Antoine, and he is, his name is Antoine Bakash, it's his business. Uh, and he's essentially the founder and has a number of luxury brands underneath his umbrella. Now, you may have heard of a movie called Crazy Rich Asians. The jewelry in Crazy Rich Asians was all provided by, um, was, there's a brand that he owns, or he also has a license for called Mawad and they do jewelry and uh, Ma White actually provided all the jewelry for the Crazy Rich Asians show, uh, movie, sorry, excuse me. So while I was there, I had an opportunity and this is, um, I had an opportunity to film other things. So another brand that he has under the, his umbrella of luxury goods is a tea brand called Wittard. 
Have a look at this footage. Beautiful. It's actually scented with rose petals, if you can see, and also rose flavorings yeah. and rose buds. I can smell it. I can smell a fruity rose component to this. The bouquet on this is beautiful. If you like smells, I love smells. The bouquet on this tea is wonderful. Talking about teas, I mean, um, but what I'm, what we're working on this right now, it was designed, uh, Antoine wanted uh, something like this for um, his brand, for, for, uh, for Wittard, and I thought, you know what, I'd love to film this, I'd love to, I, I love teas, obviously, I drink my thing, um, and I thought, I'd like to film this thing, and so we, um, we brought this together, so I, I am planning to release it on the on the channel, even though it doesn't really have much to do with perfumes. Anyway, I'll, I'll see how I go. Uh, I have my my conciliaries around me, and I welcome you. I invite you to tell me whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Let me just say, I, like I said, I, I enjoy teas. I enjoy the anyway. So we filmed that too. Um, one thing that I did do, and, and it will be coming out shortly, is I was invited. Though my Sandra, my wife, and I were invited to the, um, a jewelry dinner. <laughs> this is at the end of, the, of our tour in Kuala Lumpur. We had an awesome time. Uh, Antoine said, would you like to join us for the... Now these dudes were arriving in... Um, I, I don't want to say, because I don't want to... But they were, they were arriving in Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis, and all. so these dudes were just coming in. Uh, these were ballers, basically. And um, uh, we were invited to, to attend this. So I asked, would it be okay if I can film Antoine said yes, so a video on that will be coming out of, uh, I guess, seeing the jewelry and all this fancy pants stuff that, is, that, that yeah, was pretty exciting, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, so let me, let me move across now to perfumes. So I'm, I'm going to start, I started vague, going into perfumes, I'm going to finish vague. Uh, I had the gentleman by the name of, and here it is here, it's um, Yuchi Haferi. I'm gonna say that it could be his surname, uh, Yuchi Haferi. Uh, he mentioned to me that he'd like a lineup on gourmands. And like I've been doing in the past few weeks, bringing two or three fragrances, today I'm not gonna do it. And I did mention this to um, uh, Yuchi Haferi. What I wanna do instead, I do wanna do an actual episode on this. So I have a number of gourmands that I absolutely love. It's something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. So I will be creating an episode and I'll do a bit of a lineup on different gourmands that, that are in my collection that I actually, that I love and enjoy. And I wanna spend a bit more time on this because it's such a, you can, get, you can go in so many different directions. There's so many really cool gourmands um, that I'd like to share about. So I'll come back on that. However, I did have another, excuse me. I did have another uh, subscriber, Khalid. We're having a bit of a conversation on all things leather. He saw the episode that I did on African leather, asked me some questions, and um, and I said, look, I've recently discovered the house of Miller Harris. And this particular fragrance here, it's Etui Noir. Footnote here. I've been, I've been told that I don't pronounce my words. I, you know what it is? I don't want to, I don't, I'm not French, and so I don't want to go in with a full French accent um, because I feel like, I don't know, it feels like I'm, but in not going in, by not committing to the word, I'm also saying it not correctly either. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to improve my French so that that sounds more what the word is meant to sound like. So etui noir, tell me if I said that correctly, etui noir. Uh, so etui noir is a um, just absolutely glorious, if you like leather, you need to try this out. So this is not a punchy leather. So it's, sometimes I have, uh, oh, there are some leathers in my collection that almost lean to the, they're really, really punchy and they lean almost to a petroleum, they have a, like a petrol sort of vibe to it. They're quite pugnant and, and robust. What I like it now, I have a number of, of uh, leather fragrances in my collection. What I like about Etui Noir is that it has this, it has an alemi, so it has a alemi resin in the opening, which gives it a balsamic sort of pine freshness, almost herbal note to it. It retains that herbal um, sort of, sort of balsamic pine kind of uh, scent to it throughout the whole evolution of the fragrance. It starts off very vibrant in that sort of very bright herbal component to it. 
as it dries down. It stays to some elements there. I know there is vetiver in the base. There's also amber in the base and the patchouli. Um, but that leather note, the birch tar oil, is magical. This is a really, sometimes I find leathers can be a little bit heavy and uh, work really well in winter, not so well in sort of the summery or warmer days. I've been wearing this, we're moving into spring here in Australia. I actually um, was wearing this also when I was uh, up, up north. Um, really, as a, if you like leather, if you want something that's not so heavy, a little bit lighter. I was also wearing Russian leather, and that's another really great fragrance um, by Memo this time. So uh, that's another good one. But Etui Noir, Miller Harris, new house that I've discovered recently. I've bought a few fragrances from them. Really, really spectacular. So I will be doing a, a much more in-depth review on the other Miller Harris's that I have. But off the cuff, you like leather, Etui Noir is the one that I would recommend. Been wearing it today, magic. All right, I'm gonna finish on something different. But first, I'm gonna pour my mate. Now, what is mate talk for those who are brand new? It's a chance for us to have a casual conversation, um, fragrances and everything else. And I'm gonna move on to the everything else. I recently saw a movie called Nine Days. Now, why am I talking about Nine Days on a perfume channel? Because the movie is, it's actually really, really impressive. Um, I, I do like all styles of movies. Uh, I'm a bit of a movie buff, and um, I do like Hollywood style of movies. I, you know, sometimes I find that that kind of entertainment is enjoyable, popcorn, popcorn movie, basically. But I do, if I have a choice, and if I look at my collection, I tend to have more independent or even European movies. My family always say that I have a European sensibility when it comes to my movie choices, meaning that there's not always a happy ending, essentially. I mean, that's European movies tend to sort of, um, yeah, they don't play it. Everything doesn't get wrapped up in a pretty bow at the very end of the movie. Um, so Nine Days, independent movie, without giving you a, so a little bit of a spoiler alert. So if you are, if you are wanting to watch it, if you are also uh, um, uh, you enjoy movies, then I would recommend you stop right now. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you on the next Mate Talk because I am going to do a bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, for those who want to get, I'm not going to share too much. So I won't give you the full sort of uh, spiel on the movie, but enough to, to, to go down the path of, of why I'm recommending this to you. Um, essentially, it's, it's set in a pre-Earth moment. So think of Soul, the Pixar movie, where you see this, you know, this other life that exists prior to our life here on Earth. Uh, it's a similar sort of setup. The difference is that uh, unborn souls, and I think there's probably about eight or nine of them, are being interviewed for the position to come to Earth. That's the premise. Um, I, I won't share too much more other than only there's only one position that need, that can be filled and all the other souls are declined so it's almost like they're going for an interview and as they get declined these souls these individuals who are they evaporate or they sort of just disappear and before they do that they actually it's actually um there's a heavy sense of sadness they're actually crying and I just thought, I, I reflected on, and I know this has got nothing to do with perfumes, I'm just saying that this is such an awesome movie because it made me reflect on my life and, you know, I guess who I am. And it made me think that, um, now I'm thinking, why am I telling, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. It made me think sometimes we take, I guess, or well, I take my existence for granted. And, you know, I, I, I look at, I guess, my the, the level of problems that I have versus I guess this experience that, that I'm going through and what can I take from it. Um, so that was one part. And the other part was that, um, hang on a minute, I wrote it down. Bum, bum, buzz. Oh yeah, that when the souls who don't get selected before they evaporate, um, the guy who's interviewing them allows them to have one wish. And whenever they wish for something, and, it, and they, they're, they're watching these monitors uh, about people who are actually having a life experience, who are actually living. And each of them, when they ask for something, they ask for something that is simplistic, meaning, I mean, one, one of the characters wants to ride her bike through a street, and so they create this scene through projectors and everything else, and wind, and 
that makes her feel like she's riding down a street. And it just made me think of sometimes in life we're chasing big stuff, we're chasing, I don't know, money or promotions or whatever. And sometimes we just forget to live. We forget to, I don't know, feel. And this is again, this, I'm talking about myself. Um, forget to, you know, feel the wind on our face. Um, yeah, anyway. Nine days. I'd recommend it. It wasn't a life changing, I mean, I like movies that make me think, and I like movies that, uh, I guess, challenge my thought process. And I came away from this movie going, there's more to this move, by the way. There's a lot more, and I won't share the rest of it. Uh, but uh, it's I, it's a very slow. So just to give you a heads up. Um, it starts off very slow. You're going to be thinking, "What is going on? Why, why am I watching this?" But give it, you know, after the first half an hour. So it's not a Marvel movie, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, and then it sort of gets into its groove, and you start to feel these characters, and you. Uh, see how this whole thing plays out. Anyway, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I'd like to recommend it to you guys. Bada bing. That's my mate talk for today. Love to find out any recommendations. So as I said, I promise Senor uh, Yuki Haferi, I will do a, a gourmand lineup and I'll make sure that uh, I put forward some awesome recommendations. I keep looking this way because that's where I have my setup for the for shooting. Um, in the short term, Etui, Etui Noir, uh, I'd recommend it to you. It's a uh, rock and roll uh, leather fragrance. Everyone, we'll see you guys all on the next month at all.